In this video on integration and areas enclosed between two curves, I work through the example we see here. We can see on the right hand side here we're given a graph with this shaded region which is called R which is enclosed by these two curves. And in the question here we're told that the region R is enclosed by y equals to the square root of x and y equals to x. We're then told to find the exact value of R. So let's see how to do that, and I'll just write S-O-L here as in solution. Looking at the illustration we have here, the first thing I'm tempted to do is to label each of the two curves we have. Remember, we're told that one of them is y equals to the square root of x, and the other one is y equals to x. And looking at what we have here, it's quite clear that y equals to x is the straight line graph. And so I'll label that here, that's y equals to x, and the other curve is therefore y equals to the square root of x. Okay, now if I had to break the solution to this problem into steps, then I'd say something like this. The first thing we have to do, or the first step, is to find the x-coordinates of the points of intersection of the two curves we have. In other words, we need to find the x-coordinate of this point here and this point down here. And even if it may seem obvious to some of you that the first point of intersection here is the origin, I'm going to go ahead and find that mathematically. And for that, I go ahead and equate the expressions we have for each of the functions. In other words, I go ahead and solve the square root of x equals to x. And to solve this equation, I get rid of this square root here by squaring both sides. In doing so, this quickly turns into x equals to x squared. Next, I subtract x from both sides of this equation, leading us to 0 equals to x squared minus x. And now that I've done that, we can see very clearly that we're dealing with a quadratic equation. And we can solve this by factoring. Indeed, we can place x as a factor on the right-hand side to say that this equals to x times x minus 1. Now, since x times x minus 1 equals to 0, that means that either the factor x equals to 0, so x equals to 0 is one solution, or the factor x minus 1 equals to 0. And if x minus 1 equals to 0, that would mean that x equals to 1. And those are the two x-coordinates of the points of intersection we needed to find. In other words, that's step 1 done. And I could even add those x-coordinates to my diagram here, the points of intersection of these two curves have x-coordinates 0 and 1. Okay, now that that's done, I move on to the second thing we need to do, step 2. And this step is quite short, but it's nevertheless important. And put simply, what this step involves is writing the correct integral we're going to have to evaluate. And for that, we need to make a note of which of the two curves is above the other between these two values of x. And looking at the diagram we have here, and in particular the enclosed region, we can see that the curve that's on top here is this curve I'm drawing over right now. And that's the curve y equals to the square root of x. And I'll even make another note of that, that's y equals to the square root of x. And here's why that's important. We can now state that r, the enclosed area, or enclosed region, is equal to the definite integral from 0 to 1, and those are the two x-coordinates we just found, of the square root of x minus x. And what's important in the expression we have here is that the curve that's at the top of the enclosed area, so y equals to the square root of x in this case, is the one whose expression appears first here. The curve that's at the bottom of the enclosed region, on the other hand, is the one whose expression is being subtracted in this integral. Okay, now that that's out of the way, we move on to the third and final step in which we actually evaluate this integral. Now for that, I'll go ahead and say that r is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of x raised to the power of 1 over 2, or 1 half, minus x. Next, I integrate each of these terms using the power rule for integration, and I can state that this equals to 1 over 1 plus 1 half times x raised to the power of 1 half plus 1 minus 1 half of x squared. 
and we have the lower limit, 0, and the upper limit, 1. I carry on, and on this denominator here, as well as on the power of this first x, we have 1 plus 1 half, or 1 half plus 1. And 1 plus a half is 1 and a half, which as a fraction is 3 over 2. So this equals to 1 over 3 over 2 times x raised to the power of 3 over 2 minus 1 half of x squared with our lower limit 0 and our upper limit 1. I carry on with my working right up here. And now I tidy this fraction up using the fact that if we have a over b over c, that's equal to a times c over b. And so 1 over 3 over 2 turns into 1 times 2 over 3, or 1 times 2 thirds. In other words, this becomes 2 thirds of x raised to the power of 3 over 2 minus 1 half of x squared, where the lower limit is still 0 and the upper limit is still 1. Finally, I evaluate this expression when x equals to 1, that's the upper limit, and I take away from that what this expression is equal to when x equals to 0, that's the lower limit. And so when x equals to 1, we'll have 2 thirds times 1 raised to the power of 3 over 2, minus 1 half times 1 to the power of 2, minus 2 thirds of 0 raised to the power of 3 over 2, minus 1 half of 0 squared. And hopefully it's quite clear that this second pair of square brackets is just equal to 0. And so this becomes 2 thirds times 1 to the power of 3 over 2, minus 1 half times 1 squared. Well, no matter what power we raise 1 to, it will always be equal to 1. And so this entire expression just equals to 2 thirds times 1 minus 1 half times 1. In other words, it's equal to 2 thirds minus 1 half. And of course, we take away from that 0, which I don't need to write. And so carrying on with this calculation, we have 2 thirds minus 1 half, which is the same thing as 4 over 6 minus 3 over 6. And so this enclosed region R is in fact equal to 1 over 6. And that's the final answer. And there we go. That's how we can find the area enclosed by y equals to the square root of x and y equals to x. And that's it for this tutorial.